Thank you. Let me begin by asking a question on Redis. How many of you are familiar with Redis? Wow, that's why you're in the room. Very good. Don't have to spend much time explaining what that is. Uh, I'm going to talk about two things. One is, what is the complementary advantage of using Redis in conjunction with Spark and the performance boost you can see? Uh, we've run some benchmarks. I'll share that with you. And the second thing is, in the context of machine learning, what roles do Spark and Redis play in a complementary manner as opposed to um, perhaps uh, in an in, uh, inappropriate manner how we see some of that utilization being done today? So first of all, for uh, the couple of you who didn't raise your hands, uh, Redis is an open source in-memory uh, database. Uh, we call it uh, in-memory data, data store because it's, a, it's not just a key value store, it's not just columnar database, but really it's a data structure store, and it breaks the mold of how a database is perceived today. Uh, it uh, started about seven years ago as an open source project and has evolved since then. Redis Labs is the company behind, uh, behind open source Redis, Salvatore Sanfilippo, who is the creator of Redis, uh, works uh, with the company. We are the largest contributor to Redis open source. But on top of that, uh, we have uh, introduced Redis Enterprise. And, and that's the commercial platform on which we have several offerings, both Redis as a service, which is what we call Redis Cloud, uh, on public platforms, as well as offered in, in Enterprise's VPC. And then we have what we call Redis Pack, and that's the software you can manage on your own on-premises, or it can be made available uh, and, and managed by Redis Labs ourselves. So deployment options as they might fit the enterprise. You know, the fundamental differentiators and the power of, and, and the reason why Redis has become so popular are, are really three very simple things. The very first one is performance. Most of you, if you're used to or familiar with Redis, you probably think of it as a very fast cache. It certainly is a lot more than a cache. So the performance certainly is what Redis is equated to, which is great. You know, it can deliver hundreds of thousands of operations per second. We've exceeded million operations per second at sub-millisecond latency. But the next piece that comes is scale out in conjunction with the same performance without sacrificing it. And the second piece is the resource requirements. The compute horsepower that's required for Redis as compared to any other in-memory or other NoSQL databases, uh, it, it's dramatically different. You can see some of the examples here, and we have other benchmarks where you can run a million operations per second on two EC2 instances versus if you're running Cassandra, that might require 50, and if you take Mongo, it certainly is uh, off the charts. So that's one. The second piece is simplicity. Uh, the data structures that, that Redis has reduces the complexity of executing some very, very difficult tasks. And, and the time to market is what enabled, uh, enabled by Redis is its hallmark. Beyond performance, it's how do you get something very complex implemented because of the data structures that are there, logs, hyperlog, log, sets, and so on. And the last piece is about a year ago, we introduced something called as Redis modules, a simple API that allows for taking any program written in Java or C++ to port it on top of the Redis data structures, take advantage of the performance of Redis, and now you can take what was, you know, perhaps took several years to develop, port it on Redis, and now you have that available on Redis. So those are the three things that are the hallmarks of Redis today, not just performance. So now let me shift gears and talk about complementary aspect and the boost you get from Spark and Redis coming together. We, of course, at this conference, uses Spark, are certainly very familiar with Spark, know the power of parallel processing and what Spark's about, and the reason why it's become so popular in a very, very short window. But the fact that you have to deserialize the data, put it, process it, and then serialize it again for most of the workload uh, effects, you, you have inefficiency built in. So if you were to put in Redis in conjunction with Spark, what you do is you eliminate the steps of deserializing and serializing. You can almost think of Redis as an off-heap cache. So instead of having Spark do all of its processing and having to deserialize and serialize again, Redis puts it in its own data structures. And I'll share, share with you some numbers in the benchmarks, which result in a dramatic performance improvement when you use Spark in conjunction with, with Redis, not just at a data source, but actually as a, as a processing and a serving layer. This is a, this is a benchmark done uh, about six months ago. 
And, and this is about a thousand, so it's a time series example where we had about a thousand stocks over 32 years. That's the data set. And the data set was run in, in three different models. One was you have the data sitting on HDFS. The second one was with Tachyon serving as an off-heap cache. Third was Spark running as an on-heap cache in its own process. And finally, running Redis as an off-heap cache. And you can see the performance, of course, with HDFS uh, data setting and having to process separately on Spark. You can expect that. But the comparison between performance between Tachyon and Spark, which is slightly better performance as it's running within Spark process as opposed to off-heap. Now you can put that data off-heap on Redis, and you can see the dramatic improvement. And that's an example of how the two technologies working together give you a dramatic, dramatic performance boost. And you can see the, the ratio of the improvements that uh, listed at the bottom of the chart. Now I want to talk about machine learning. Um, so, you know, there were lots of frameworks, lots of training engines, and, and some ways of serving, uh, serving the data and serving the models also being implemented in the marketplace. So, so why does Redis need to come in and offer something specific to machine learning? This is, uh, you know, your, your standard model. You have the training, you establish the model, and then you serve the model and the data to the application layer. Very straightforward. Uh, you also have a large number of frameworks you also have a large number of frameworks that do the first step and establish the model. What's happening today is one of two things. Either Spark is inappropriately used as a serving layer, or custom frameworks are being developed to offer the serving layer on top of the mechanism. So if you put Spark in a processing framework and you have a second option, which is Redis as a serving layer, you now have best of breeds. You're not forcing Spark, which is a parallel processing you know, behemoth, to work in a serial environment when you have to serve the data to the application layer. That's an inappropriate use of Spark. I think if you take Redis to do that, you now have the benchmarks I'm going to share with you. So here's an example. Um, you know, why accuracy is important, nobody will argue with this, right? If you have got enough data, your model is going to be more accurate, and you won't find yourself serving wrong ads to the wrong audience, so on. Similarly, if you've got lots and lots of data, you may not be able to afford, and that might be too much burden put at the application layer. So in neither of those two models are actually appropriate. And so I'm going to give you a quantification of this example and then talk about how Redis is adding value in this context. So here is a, a leading company, an ad-serving company, that has got massive amounts of data that's got to serve up. So 20,000 ads per second at a very, very low latency. It runs 1,000 campaigns, which is about 1,000 random forest algorithms. And each forest has 15,000 trees, which are seven layers deep. And if you just do the math on that, you can see at least there's a typo in there. It should say 2.5 trillion. If it leads to over 2 trillion operations per second that have to be conducted to serve the data set we talked about in the previous chart. And if you take that, and, and you apply to the highest performing virtual core you can get on an AWS instance, you're, you're talking about 23 million virtual cores required to process that amount of data. And you continue the math further down, you've got 44,000 cores required, you take the C4 instance, which is the largest instance you can get from AWS, you need about a 1,247 instances of AWS, the, the highest end instance. You need. And that translates to about $11 million a year. Clearly, the economics of that equation doesn't work for an ad-serving company. Two things. We took the exact same data set, ran it in a model where Spark was doing the training and, and processing, and we had Redis do the serving of the data. With the compute requirements being dramatically lowered, we saw a 97% reduction in the resources required to run the data set from this ad-serving company. And this is a real-world example, by the way, the company is using this combination today. The second piece is a reduction in latency, a dramatic reduction in latency. And this goes back to using Spark for what Spark's very good at and using Redis for what Redis is very good at. And this is not simply about the fact that Redis is high performance, but also remember the data structures. If you can use a sorted set, in the time series example I was talking about earlier, if you can use assorted sets one of its data structures to now package the data 
across the years, the types of rows that you have in the columns, and you stick it in sorted sets, you not only get the performance of Redis, but you are also able to then extract the query directly from the sorted sets, as opposed to having to map each data to the indices that it has. So you get dual benefit of that. And it's reflected in this result here. So you, you have a resource benefit, and you have a dramatic lat latency reduction if you combine Redis and Spark. So with, with the two kind of best of breed technologies, you now have you know, lowest resource requirement, lowest latencies, and the ability to process in, in you know, very, very difficult environments where machine learning is heading us to. So with this, I want to stop here and share with you a number of resources that back up many of the things I've talked about, the white papers, benchmarks, and things on both performance, resource requirements, how Redis and Spark are working together in a machine learning context. So we've got two minutes to go. Um, if there are any questions, I can take it now, or, or we can take it uh, offline uh, after the session. Here in this example? Yeah, yeah I don't have the, the metric on the load time, but uh, I can get that for you. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much.